I have always been so encouraged by your prayer meetings. And it is prayer that I want to look at with you now as we turn to Jesus' words in Matthew 6. And I want to focus on those simple words of Matthew 6, verse 9, where Jesus says, Pray like this, Our Father in heaven. For they are words we'll see that open the floodgates of prayer and heavenly blessing. So, what is real prayer? John Calvin put it brilliantly. He said, prayer is the chief exercise of faith. In other words, prayer is the first and main way true faith expresses itself. Because in true prayer, we actually depend upon God. We actually trust him. And that is exercising faith. In prayer, you show how much you really want communion with God, how much you really depend on him. Which is why, friends, prayerlessness is practical atheism. And if that's true, that prayer is the chief exercise of faith, dear brothers and sisters, of course everything, of course the world, the flesh, the devil, everything conspires against you praying. Meaning, friend, you're not the odd one out in your struggle with prayer. Sometimes that's our fear. But we struggle with prayer. We think it's our secret shame. Everyone else can do it. I struggle. No, you're not the odd one out. You're just a sinner. And sinners are naturally inclined away from faith, away from prayer. And if you know yourself a sinner, you know who the friend of sinners is. We struggle with prayer because we're sinners, but we come to the friend of sinners. So, if prayer is the chief exercise of faith, what's going to help us sinners pray? If prayer is exercising faith? Well, faith comes by hearing the word of God. Paul writes that in Romans 10, verse 17. Faith, and so prayer, is birthed by the gospel. And that's why scripture and prayer are so often put together. Do you remember Daniel in Daniel 9? He was encouraged to pray by reading Jeremiah. It's the word of God, the gracious message of Christ that awakens faith and so awakens prayer. We breathe in scripture and we breathe out prayer. Breathe in, breathe out. That's the Christian life. Prayer is the breath of heavenly life. And where that life is, there will be some prayer. Where heavenly life flourishes, there will be much prayer and much pleasure in prayer. So, let's go to the Word of God now, which feeds prayer. In Matthew 6, verse 9, Jesus says, pray like this, Our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven. So the first thing Jesus would have prayers known is the name Father. That is the first and basic lesson in prayer. Now, friend, do you know God as your Father? Well, if you've put your trust in Christ, He is your Father. And yet, naturally, we tend to think of God as aloof in heaven, a distant ruler. We imagine He's too great to be interrupted by us sinners. And so He feels distant and we feel guilty. And so we don't dare go to him in prayer. Oh no, brothers and sisters, God is so great, he cannot overlook you. And the gospel means he is not a distant Lord in heaven. He sent his son to bring us back to himself, that we might be adopted. The father sent his son, that the son might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters, that we, yes, we might be his children, that we might call him Abba, Father. To call God Father means you understand that the Son, who's been eternally in the lap of the Father, has come to bring us that we might be with him there where he is, that we who've rejected him might be brought back, and brought back not merely as creatures, but as children 
to enjoy the love the Father has always shown the Son. You know, twice Paul in his letters writes that God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And have you ever noticed what a strange word he uses there? Paul writes all his letters in Greek, but here he inserts this one Aramaic word, Abba. Why does he do that? Why does he change language? Why this one word in a different language all of a sudden? Well, if you turn to the scene in Mark 14, where Jesus is praying in the garden the night before he's killed, there you hear him talking in private to his father. He says, Abba, Father. And Paul, by using us this word, is showing us as personally as he can, sonship means being given the very relationship with the Father that the Son himself has. So that we come before the Father now, just as Jesus does. Abba, this is Jesus' personal name for his Father, and he shares it with us. It's an intimate word. You can hear it just as you say it, Abba, Abba. I think a little child couldn't say Father, but even a little baby can babble Abba. It's what Jesus shares with us, a childlike intimacy with God, trust and love. For to know I am a beloved child of God, it stops me from thinking that prayer is some ladder to God, an exercise by which I work my way into his favour. No, prayer doesn't make you more accepted by God. Prayer is growing in the appreciation of what I have been given. That united to Christ, I am. And if you've trusted Christ, you are a cherished child and the Father delights to hear you. For to our Father, prayer is the cries of his little children. Prayer is described as incense in scripture, a pleasing smell. In other words, our Father delights to hear, to help. Now friends, the devil loves to fight us here. The devil will whisper, you can't pray. Why would a holy God listen to a sinner like you? Don't listen. Don't listen to him. Don't think that you need to prepare yourself before you can pray. If you feel too sinful, if you feel too spiritually cold to pray, cry out to him for mercy. Call now to the throne of grace and your words will go into the loving ears of your Father. And if still you feel you can't pray, look to the cross. The cross is God's guarantee. He will hear the prayers of his children. So look to the blood of Christ when you pray. See how he's covered your sins. See how he's opened the way to heaven. See how he loves you. And can you doubt he longs to hear from you? Go to your father. He promises he will hear and he will answer. Let's look at the next word Jesus uses to help us pray. He says, pray like this our Father in heaven. For this kind Father of ours is the King of all creation, the Lord of hosts. You know, my ministry, Union, has a PhD program to raise up Christian leaders. And we run it in partnership with the Free University of Amsterdam. Now, the Free University of Amsterdam was founded by the great Calvinist theologian Abraham Kuyper who in the early years of the 20th century was also Prime Minister of the Netherlands. And in his inaugural lecture for the Free University of Amsterdam, Kuiper famously said, There is not a square inch in the whole domain of our human existence over which Christ, who is sovereign over all, does not cry, Mine. Indeed, every molecule in the universe moves at his command. There is no power, no authority outside his control. He's not worried by a pandemic. He has it on a chain and he uses it for his glory. And so when you come to him in prayer, you come boldly to your father and you come confidently for he reigns over all. John Newton put it like this. He said, you are coming to a king 
large petitions with you bring, for his grace and power are such none can ever ask too much. I never knew John Newton, of course, but I had the privilege of ministering together and writing a book together with the great John Stott. John Stott said he once visited a small village church when he was on holiday, and he said this. He said, when we came to the pastoral prayer, it was led by a lay brother because the pastor was on holiday. So he prayed that the pastor might have a good holiday. Well, that's fine, said Stott. Pastors should have good holidays. Second, he prayed for a lady member of the church who was about to give birth to a child, that she might have a safe delivery, which is fine. Third, he prayed for another lady who was sick. And then it was over. That was all there was. It took 20 seconds. I said to myself, this is a village church with a village God. Now, friends, the Korean church has been known for its fearless faith, for its bold praying in the face of impossible odds. And the Lord has blessed you richly for it. And so I beg you now, do not lose that. Do not settle for small prayers to a small God. Do not be anxious like the world, running and hiding from problems like everyone else, because our Father is not a village God. So don't pray cautious little prayers for little things that you can see to yourself. You are coming to a king. Large petitions with you bring. And the greater your view of God, the more you will expect from him. And the more you expect from God, the more you are likely to receive. So when you pray, don't think about praying. Focus on the one you're praying to. Remember who you are coming before. For when your eyes go up and you see the awesome sovereignty of our Father in heaven, your prayers will get bigger. For he is not a village God. But there is one more important word Jesus uses when he teaches us, pray this, our Father in heaven. And that is, he is our, our Father in heaven. Not just my Father, our Father. Now, have you ever wondered about that time in Matthew 9, Matthew 9 from verse 36, where we read that when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And you remember, he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few. Therefore, Jesus said, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. That is what my ministry union is all about. But why did Jesus ask his disciples to pray this? Surely Jesus could pray for that. And wouldn't one prayer of Jesus be worth more than all of their prayers? but he wants them to join with him, to share his concerns, to share his prayers, to share his mission. And that's what we're doing in prayer. We are joining in with the son's fellowship with his father, joining in with his mission to the world. We pray with him, our father, and what confidence that gives. And we pray our father because he brings us together as the father's family. When we pray together, it is a little bit of heaven on earth gathering together around the throne, whether that is brothers and sisters gathering at Sarang Church, or whether it's brothers and sisters in Wales and South Korea and elsewhere coming together in one spirit to kneel together before our one Father. Then our prayers for each other build up our love for each other. We feel our family fellowship together more. And then we express what Jesus died to gain. We are a worldwide family, united by the blood of Jesus, sharing one spirit with our eyes all fixed on that same sovereign throne of grace. My beloved brothers and sisters, now as you come to pray, you show how different we all are to the world. We are not an anxious people without help. We are not left to ourselves to protect and bless ourselves. 
We are not alone in the world, throwing up desperate prayers to a distant God who may or may not hear us. No, with boldness and with joy, we get on our knees and with fearless faith, we pray, our Father in heaven. And his fatherly heart is near to all who call on him. And that fatherly heart then wields the scepter that rules the world.